Great. Thanks a lot for the uh, introduction there, Jill, and thanks a lot to Recruiting Blogs for helping organize today's event. So just uh, a quick bit of background on Rollpoint before we get started. So we are uh, an online and mobile platform focused on helping companies increase their employee referrals. So we're based between San Francisco, New York, and London, and we've taken a lot of the best practice of our lead investors, Google and Facebook, and actually built that into the solution. So we worked quite closely with the teams there to, to really help um, companies of all sizes, um, ranging from small organizations to Fortune 500s to help increase their referral rate. So if you don't mind going on to the next slide, please, Joe. And in terms of some of the clients we work with, um, certainly a lot in technology and a lot in staffing, so some notable names like Informatica and Kelly Services, and obviously referrals being a great source of hire. As the team's going to discuss today, um, we've really helped these companies understand their rewards, deployed the software to make it very easy for employees to refer and make it much easier for them to actually manage those rewards and engage the, the population across different geographies. And if you want to jump onto the final slide on our side there, Jill. We are backed by a, a world-class advisory board. I'm sure you recognize a few names here. It's people like Bill Borman who've helped um, strategize the referral schemes at places like Oracle, BBC, and KPMG. We do add a, an implementation layer helping uh, companies devise their referral policy, taking a lot of the best practices that um, people like Burson uh, do discuss in their research and helping companies structure that and obviously add the technology to actually help manage that process as well. So uh, I'd like to now introduce today's presenters. So we have Robin Erickson, who directs um, Burson's talent acquisition research practice. So she's been in the industry for 19 years, had work published in places like Deloitte Review, Business Finance, and the International Journey, uh, Journal of Organizational Analysis. And also Denise Moulton, who's had over 14 years experience in the industry, previously headed up talent acquisition at Hasbro, and um, is also over at Deloitte in the talent acquisition um, process, helping with the, the research programs. So um, yeah, thanks a lot to them for organizing today's presentation. It looks to be a really good one, so I shall hand over to Robin to kick things off. Thanks so much, Kes, and thank you to everyone who has joined us today. Uh, Denise and I are both excited to share our research with you. Um, since Kes has gone ahead and done our introductions, I think I'm just going to briefly go over our agenda. Uh, first of all, uh, today, you know, as, as the title said, you know, this, this really is uh, a, a primer, an introduction of sorts of how to create an employee referral program. So um, our agenda today is going to cover five components, the value of employee referrals and why they matter. Uh, second, the factors to consider before getting started. Third, the ways to drive program engagement and different types of incentives that are offered. Fourth, uh, what to measure uh, in order to gauge program success. And fifth, technology and social media and employee referral programs. Uh, we're hoping to make this a fun and informative session, and we're, we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end of the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. And um, I'll have you uh, advance the slide, please. So as I mentioned, first we're going to talk about the value of employee referrals. Um, and if you go to the next slide, um, you can see um, the, you know, at, at its core, sourcing talent um, is the identification of both internal and external candidates using different tools, various resources, and technologies. And many organizations enhance their chances of hiring success through using employee referral programs and incentives. Uh, employee and referral programs can help align uh, internal and, and external sourcing efforts, as well as bridge the gap between pre-hire and post-hire stages of talent management. Uh, they're just one component of a total sourcing strategy, and that's what we're going to be focused on here today. So one of the things to think about is that um, at the outset, before you develop an employee referral program, human resource and talent leaders like facts, especially if you are developing a business case for an employee referral program. Um, you're going to want to make sure you include some of the important facts around uh, employee referral programs. And there's definitely a case to be made for investing in them. So as you can see from the chart on the slide, a higher percentage of employees that were hired through employee referral programs were still on the job more than three years. Um, so you can see 42% of employees hired through an employee referral program were still on the job after, for more than three years compared to only 14% for career sites and 32% for job boards. 
Uh, research has also shown that employee referral programs can increase employee engagement and reduce time to fill, which is one of the most critical measurements within talent acquisition. And CareerBuilder in 2010 found that 82% of organizations rated employee referrals above other sources of hire for the return on the investment. Uh, so, you know, what are some of the other reasons that employee referral programs matter? Uh, we'll go into those on the next slide. So, uh, you can see uh, here that, you know, we've got uh, four different things that uh, we think matter significantly when making the uh, case to launch or to rebrand an employee referral program. Uh, the first is that current employees refer from their networks. Uh, they're often a positive, or positive predictor of success. Uh, second, they can help with the hard to fill or specialized roles. Um, you know, and, and third, their referrals are often a strong cultural fit. It turns out that, uh, not surprisingly, employees refer people that they like. And uh, they also refer people who they think would fit in a, in a position, um, often having a much better sense of what that role would, in, would, it, would entail. And fourth, you know, everyone likes to have friends at work. So uh, we, you know, definitely some things to think about when you're uh, deciding to <laughs> make an employee referral program. But you do want to make sure that your employee referral programs are fun and uh, in order to drive engagement and usage. You're going to want your employees to participate for more than just the, the awards, the cash incentives or the non-cash incentives. And so if you're, if you're able to brand your employee referral program, um, it will help you build your talent pipeline, help you hire great employees, and uh, you definitely think about making it fun. So with that, let's go to our first polling question to find out a little bit more about our audience. So the question here is, does your organization currently have an employee referral program in place? And just two responses here. Uh, yes, we're trying to make it the best it can be. And no, not yet. That's why we're here today. So we'll give you just a few seconds here to answer the polling question. And uh, Denise, what do you think? Do you think that we'll have a high percentage of folks here who do have employee referral programs in place, or do you think that we've, since the the, the you know since our webinar is focused on building one, do you think we'll have a higher majority of people who don't have one yet? I think everyone probably has one already, but they're looking to make it a little bit better. Right? That's why they're here today. So we'll see. Ooh. Yeah. So I mean, as as predicted, seventy percent <laughs> uh, have one, and they're trying to make it the best that they can be. And that's actually right in line with some research that was done by CareerBuilder that found that sixty nine percent of organizations said that they had an employee referral program at their organization. <laughs> So uh, that's, that's pretty amazing that that came out exactly the same. So, uh, so we, now that we know that we've got you all uh, engaged and, and on board with us here, I'm going to turn it over to Denise to talk about how you get started with uh, your employer referral program. Well, thank you so much, Robin. Thank you, everyone, for today and for being here. And this next section will really talk about what to think about before getting started and really what you do after you've made that commitment to uh, develop an employee referral program. So, you know, obviously, we've just demonstrated some of the value and why they matter. But we also think that when you're getting started, you may wish to consider, you know, a lot of different things, like what other companies do in your industry to ensure you're creating a really credible program, but most importantly, we believe it's important to complete a self-assessment or an audit of your current recruitment climate. And on this slide, you can see a number of different questions that you can ask yourself when you're planning for a program. Now, for that 70% of you that already have a program in place, but you're looking to maybe you know, make sure it's delivering the best value, you can continue to reassess and ask yourself these questions as well. Um, you may find that you need to make some tweaks, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But specifically, think about the following. Are you really ready to do this? Are you really ready from a people resource perspective and from a budget perspective to embark down this journey and to create a really good employer referral program? Let's talk about that budget too. How much is it going to cost? 
where does that burden lie? And the burden for rolling out a program will likely be an HR or a talent cost, but think about the actual payment of any of the incentives. We've seen companies that fund those through a common fund, or is it paid out through a cost center that's aligned to a business? You've got to think about those things in advance of starting. Also, consider technology and does your system, that system that you have currently in place, does it support referrals? And if not, can you get a new one? Do you need to adjust functionality within your current system, perhaps turning on something that you weren't currently using to support a really good employer refer referral program? And, you know, policy. Policy is a big thing in HR, obviously, and if you're launching a new program or changing one that already exists and you're thinking about rewriting it, you know, that's going to take an army and you all also may need to get legal involved and, you know, experience shows that that could be a little bit timely as well. So consider the time impacts there of developing a policy that works. And then, really, how are you demonstrating the value of employee referrals in your organization? That's the crux of it all. You need to show value in anything new that you do. So depending on the size of your organization, many of these considerations will be non-issues. However, it's really better to just uh, to, you know, opt to any potential roadblocks before you get started. You know, we think here that a project plan is always super helpful. Um, you know, as you're going to see a little bit later in our presentation, communication and engagement are a key component in the success of an employee referral program. And these elements take careful planning, so definitely don't rush it. Remember what Robin said earlier, this is supposed to be fun. So if you're ready to throw in the towel, please don't. Um, in fact, you know, why don't we take a quick dive in, or into the overview of effective employee referral, pro referral program planning. So next slide, please. Okay, great. Well, this is a great slide for everyone to take a look at. So as you can see from our research, there are four major components to consider when creating an employee referral program. We're going to go into these in more detail throughout the presentation, but at a high level, employee referral program planning should include the following. Let's start from the left. A really good strategy. So consider the purpose of your program, the scope. Is this going to be a local, local program or a global program? Do employees of all types, are they all eligible? Is there certain guidelines there? We've seen often that temporary employees and oftentimes interns as well are not eligible to participate in these types of programs, so it's important to think about that in the beginning so you don't have people unhappy that they can't participate. Think about attractive award types, including cash awards and non-cash awards, and also consider the timing of this payment. People like their money, and they like it quick. If you're not being clear about when they can expect to see that hit in their, their, their bottom line, they may get frustrated. Um, communication and employee engagement is really, really huge. I'll talk about this a lot, but employer fellow programs are a great way to drive your brand, culture initiatives, role clarity, anything. So use the program for everything that it can provide evaluation. You really need to show how you plan to deliver the win back to your organization and your leadership team. We're going to be providing some great examples later of key metrics to consider for kids' success, but think about, you know, rolling out a program and making it fun and accessible is one thing, but you have to be able to measure it and demonstrate that it's adding value. By segmenting out each of these key components, you can assign key milestones on your project plan and assign resources accordingly. Based on the size of your planning or implementation team, rolling out a new or rebranded employee referral program could take anywhere from a few weeks to several months. Just depends on how much time you have, you know, aside from your daytime job, how many resources that you have, how, much, how big is your budget, things like that. But just don't rush it. Do it well the first time out, or if you're rebranding, doing it much better will really add value in the end. So really next, what we're going to do is highlight even more key considerations for you to think about when developing the strategy for your employee referral program because, you know, employee referral programs are all about the employee, so there's an awful lot of ground to cover. Okay, so key components, you need to develop a strategy. If you have an employee referral program, just like in any other HR thing, there has to be a really good strategy. So by, begin by creating a strategy that will define the goals of your program, the benefits to the organization, and how the program will work. And that's basically the administration, on the recruiter end, the employee end, everything all rolled up. Definitely consider the following. What are the goals for your program? For example, do you hope a certain percentage of your hires will come through referrals? We've talked to companies of all sizes, and some people set a simple milestone of 10% we want to come through employee referrals, and some both 35 to 40%. It just depends. 
what are you using the program for besides that? Are you using the program to help support more than talent acquisition traditional sourcing, but are you also thinking about how it could potentially impact your diversity goals? So figure that out in the beginning as you create that strategy, because those are going to help tell your story throughout the program. Um, think about if you want your employer referral to cover all types of positions. I touched upon this briefly, but it's very important to think about your intern population, your temporary population, whether you have full-time and part-time workers, perhaps you have a field organization, you could have manufacturing. There's a number of different things. So make sure that you're thinking about all the different types of referrals you may, re you may receive and all the people that may want to get in the game super important to make sure that everyone knows that they can if they can participate and if so here's how it works okay um, you can also differentiate your awards based on the level so for example award types and again we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit deeper but um, maybe a little bit less for an administrative or an individual contributor type position or a part-time position versus what we'll, that we see organizations pay out for manager level roles or frontline leader roles so Consider tearing out your payments to incent people in different ways. And also, think about um, different sites and geographies, and is it going to be a global program, or are you going to do a local rollout and then see how it goes? And so figure out the scope and kind of where you want to start and then you know, roll it out to be most effective, and then you can always make it bigger as it gets um, some you know, wheels underneath it. And then really, how are you tracking your employee referral programs? Um, Source tagging is critically important, and knowing where your people are coming from is huge. And what we hear is it's a, a real big cause of headaches for um, HR and talent departments to, you know, think about the amount of referrals they're getting and how they're responding to them, and when the timing of communications happens, et cetera, et cetera. So really, how you're how the referrals are being made, how you're tracking and reporting them is critical from the get-go. Setting it straight will benefit you down the road. So. As we're talking about getting things right and giving clear expectations to the organization, let's talk a little bit more about setting realistic expectations that you can truly deliver. The next slide, please. Next slide. Hello. I actually think it's one back. Yeah, I think, I think it's the right slide. There you go, thanks. Yeah, no, you see. Okay, so um, think about those expectations. So employees referring from their network are adding great value, and while they have a vested interest in seeing their referral hired because, you know, money, after all, is a really good thing, they also need to be kept informed. Organizations starting an employee referral program must decide how recruiters will respond to incoming referrals and then communicate this information clearly to both recruiters and employees. Having firm guidelines in place for employer referral program administration is important to sustain the health and the integrity of the program. Oftentimes, you know, we've heard, and especially in prior roles for myself, you know, people will say, I referred someone, but I never heard back from anyone. It gets them really frustrated. You certainly want to avoid that if you can. So consider, you know, guidelines around, you know, will the company review re referred resumes first before other candidates? Will candidates who apply for positions through the referral program have a better chance at a position in a field of equally qualified applicants. So, you know, that's really up to each organization how they want to manage it, but what we're suggesting is that you set that realistic expectation so everyone understands how it's going to work. Communicating that a referral is not being progressed in an interview process is a really tough message to deliver, and after having spent such a long time in frontline recruitment, I can tell you it, it's often, um, it's a big disappointment on both ends. So, but as you know, not all referrals will be qualified or even close to being qualified for an open role. So the recommendation is, you know, from the recruiting team, and this backs it up with the strategy and how you train it out, but just don't beat around the bush. If a referral, a referral is not qualified for a role, recruiters should acknowledge it. It's important to ensure there's a really good reason for a disqualification. Um, to that end, having very good job descriptions help, and I can tell you, that it continues to amaze, recruiter, amaze recruiters daily that people just refer anybody because they want to get involved in these programs. So to order to help impact the, the administrative burden, having those really clearly defined role parameters should help 
more quality employee referrals and should also help with technology and tracking down the road. So definitely think about you know, how you want to train your recruiters to do their job uh, to the best of their ability. So this is really good stuff. Um, we're super excited about employee referral programs, as you can tell. Um, I'm actually going to turn it over to Robin now to review ways to communicate new employee referral programs out to the organization, how we can think about ideas of engaging employees and get them excited, and also look at award types. Robin? Sure. Thanks, Denise. Um, if we could go uh, one more slide. Um, yep. So as with all employee programs that are new or are being uh, reimagined, uh, change management, continual communications, and some degree of training are going to be required. And if this is the first time you've implemented an employee referral program, then your communication and awareness campaign will help uh, develop um, and maintain the interest and support of your employee base, particularly in the beginning. You will also want to educate your employees about the value that their participation can bring to the workplace and then provide coaching on how to position the company and its culture. Uh, what, what is that employment brand that uh, you want the employees to be talking about to their friends? Um, you want to make the program not only meaningful, but also accessible. And Denise had mentioned earlier, you know, you want to, you want to make it as easy as possible. You might want to make it fun. Uh, so it's important that employees know what's coming uh, and that they know, you know, what's in what, what the sort of the parameters of the program. So you're going to want to establish those processes and forms, whether or not they're on paper or if they're online. You're going to want to make the process just as simple as possible so that employees will uh, find it easy to participate. And uh, so you know you need to communicate how, where, and to whom to make a referral, you know, how to check on the status of a referral, uh, how and when the company will give rewards. Denise referred to this uh, just on the last slide as you know, setting realistic expectations. So very important for your communication campaign. Second, um, when you're getting the word out about your employee referral program, it's a great chance to reinforce your employer brand, um, which are those elements that articulate what it means to work inside your organization, as well as the organizational differentiators and the specific employee value proposition. You know, what can employees expect from uh, your organization? So you can give them simple language or taglines to use in their communications. Um, you can provide messages for them to post on you know, Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, and be clear about your messaging and the way that you communicate open positions. And uh, we're going to share an example now of a company that's doing this well. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. And uh, we're going to... We've been doing some research with Red Hat, and they're doing their employee referral program really well. Um, so just in, by way of context, Red Hat is an open source software company that develops software products and technology solutions. They are an employer of choice for software engineers. But um, as many of you know, the competition for open source experts um, has become increasingly intense. So. Uh, given their open source roots, they've got a significant presence in the uh, online communities of open source programmers and engineers who actively discuss the developments and the solutions in the industry. Uh, since many Red Hat employees also contribute to these online forums, there's often someone within the organization who's already familiar with candidates um, as they come into Red Hat. Um, but it also this, this sort of this very active talent, this, sorry, this very active online community enables the Red Hat employees to actively engage with potential hires before they even start the hiring process. Uh, so Red Hat really calls on their associates, they have 5,900 associates, to be recruiters. And uh, their, their employee referral program is called the Red Hat Ambassador Program, and it's a tiered reward system in which eligible employees can receive cash bonuses and then uh, non-cash incentives such as company swag, uh, stickers, hoodies, and other rewards for every hire that they bring in. 
And then the Red Hat employees who refer five employees are given the title Ultimate Ambassador. And uh, they can earn two cash bonuses as well as other you know, Red Hat memorabilia, and then a slot on the company's ambassador advisory board. So they've actually taken uh, the idea of referring employees to a whole, you know, if you're doing this, and if you're doing, if you've referred five people, you know, you could actually potentially be part of our board that governs this program. And the program has really resonated with their employees, and in 2013, more than half of all new Red Hat hires came in through employee referrals. So clearly, you know, they've gotten their employees engaged with their employee referral program. And next, if we go to the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit more about engagement. So as Denise mentioned earlier, that, you know, defining the strategy, getting employees informed, really, really important. Equally impactful is how you get employees involved in the program beyond just submitting referrals. What are the different ways that you can embed employee referrals as part of the culture in your organization? You know, making it something like Red Hat did where all the employees, you know, are really, you know, excited about it and it becomes a badge of honor to be a brand ambassador. So uh, where do you begin and how do you engage them? Well, you know, you need to encourage your employees to get in the game and participate. Um, specifically, you can um, encourage them to quote unquote shake their trees and see where the apples fall. Uh, specifically, you can ask them, you know, who do you know at every chance you get? Uh, you can talk about the employee referral program with your new hires. Uh, that's a great way to get um, your, the folks who are the most excited about your organization, your new hires. Um, it's a great way to get them acclimated, um, but also to um, have them, you know, bring to your uh, attention some candidates that you might not have known before, um, but that your new hires can refer. So it's also uh, a good idea to ask your employees to leverage their social networks. You know, asking them to send messages to LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, you know, for referrals. They can sort of the idea of the pay it forward concept works really well here. Uh, you want to share, I think I mentioned this um, a few minutes ago, you know, you want to share information about your organization that's very clear and concise, um, you know, good content. The, the more good content you can share with uh, your employees, the more sort of content they will have to discuss your, your organization and how well uh, things are, you know, going and why they would want to participate in the employee referral program. So uh, talking about everything is, is really what you need to be doing, but you also need to anticipate the questions that you're going to get. And some of those might be a little tough, and we actually have some examples of those if you'll go to the next slide. So we have here some frequently asked employee questions about employee referral programs. Uh, and, you know, let's face it. New programs usually cause a stir um, at any organization, even when they're positively received, which is why you know communication and change management are just so important. So you know, let's dig into some of these questions you might get from employees and some ways to think about responding to them. So you know, a typical question is, how well do I need to know my referral? Well, that's going to be different for each organization. So you'll want to define the parameters of your program. Uh, when you communicate with employees, you know, do you only want people uh, referrals that your employees know very well, or are you willing to have referrals come in from a broader network as well? Another question: uh, What if I don't have a resume? You know, no resume, no problem. You can consider sharing contact information or just social profiles. Um, and many ATS systems track candidates by email addresses. So, you know, you need a little bit of information, you know, a name and an email address or a social profile. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have a resume, that's okay. You can still get started. Uh, you know, why should I bother? Well, that's, that's sort of the crux of it. Well, you're going to want to, you know, communicate those program incentives. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those um, on the next slide. Uh, how else can I help? Well, you know, getting the word out is definitely uh, 
definitely what we'd like to see employees doing with employee referral programs. Another question is, you know, will I know if my referral is engaged? You know, sort of what happens? Uh, did their resume go into a black hole? And if, uh, as Denise had mentioned earlier, you know, if the recruiters don't have a specific process about how they're going to communicate with the employees who are referring candidates and communicate with the candidates themselves, you know, there, there is that sense that, you know, maybe nothing's happening or maybe the resume didn't go through. So, you know, how, what are your processes for making sure that everyone knows where their resume is at in the hiring process along the way? Uh, I'm hiring on my team. Can I refer someone or can I refer my spouse? Um, you know, the first one, I'm hiring on my team. Can I refer someone? We've seen it done in some organizations, but it's generally frowned upon. Um, since there's definitely a sense of uh, favoritism there. Um, you know, can I refer my spouse? Well, uh, <laughs> why not? However, same with the question about, you know, I'm hiring someone on my team. Um, as long as it's allowed by the organization, you know, these are some of those other parameters that you're just going to want to make sure that are clearly explained in your, uh, in your strategy and then communicated to employees. You know, what are the award levels? Well, clearly, you know, you're going to want to make sure that those questions are communicated. Um, how do I submit a resume? How long until my referral contacted? My friend applied in the past. Um, or, you know, what, what if my referral is not hired? Again, all of these things are things that you're going to want to think about in advance and have an FAQ document. But also make sure that your program communications clearly address all of these. So um, with that, we're going to go on to uh, the next slide, where we're going to talk about the different types of incentives. And you know, basically, there, there is no absolute norm. Um, you can see, you know, as, as Denise had said, you know, that it's very, you know, there are different variables. They're going to be different to each organization. Um, so when you define your award amounts, you need to consider the job level. Um, whether the skills needed are critical or are they in short supply, um, and perhaps other factors, so if it's such as the difficulty in filling the position. Um, and you know, there's really no standard or formal process for determining these, but you can define your own bonus structures based on your company's budget, your culture, your available resources, and your hiring needs. Some organizations um, don't have full-time resources to run a program like this, and so. Uh, you know, you need to think about, you know, what are your available resources to, to do this and, and how will that work then? Um, the average range for bonuses that we've seen is anywhere from $500 to $4,000, depending on the job and the, and the level. Uh, for example, one Canadian company that we interviewed had offers, uh, they offer $500 for a referral bonus for part-time positions, $1,000 for full-time positions, and $1,500 for management or leadership positions. Um, however, you know, in times of employee shortage or for specialized positions, these awards can range from $2,000 to $5,000. So there, there really isn't a hard and fast rule. Um, the one thing, though, that you're going to want to make sure that you think about, though, are the effect of your local tax regulations on any cash award or bonus, because most federal and state uh, so the federal and most state governments regard these cash rewards as taxable income. So it's just really important that everyone knows going in uh, the effect that, that these incentives will have on uh, employee, employee taxable income. So you know, given, that, given some of the issues around taxable income, you, know, you might want to think about some non-cash incentives. And um, for example, some companies give donations to the charity of choice from the employee um, who's doing the referral. Um, you can also consider other types of re rewards, including time off or public recognition or even something very simple like a reserved parking place for a week. Um, or even you know, more company memorabilia, such as you know, Red Hat was giving out. Um, and so you know, that, that could help ease the, the tax implications. So you know, whether your incentives are cash or some other type of reward, it's important to think about the payment timing before you begin the program. And um, you know, do you want to do a payment after a certain number of months have passed, like within two to six months? 
or do you want to do a payment split like 50% at the time of offer acceptance or perhaps and then 50% after a certain number of months. Just really important that you know what you're doing when you start the program and that you've communicated that clearly. So um, let's go ahead and move on to the, our next polling question and see you know, what types of incentives are most appropriate for your organization. Uh, Denise, you know, what, what do you expect to see here? Cash. People want their money. Yeah, I, I suspect that we're going to see cash. Um, it would be really interesting to know some of the other non-cash uh, incentives that companies are, uh, that are doing. So uh, we might have to do a little bit of research on that after this <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and close the polling question. Ah, uh, yeah, so by Ooh. far, we've got uh, cash at 58%. 36% though are doing a combination of both, just like Red Hat was. So it's only 5% doing non-cash. So that's, that's probably right where we would have expected it to be. Um, so with that, we've, we've gone through strategy and expectations and communications. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to Denise to talk about measurement, technology, and social media. Thank you, Robin. So that was great. Thinking about money always gets me very excited. But let's talk about um, evaluating your program and really how you deliver the win to your organization. So, you know, before embarking on any new program, I'm sorry to say this to HR people, but we have to determine what metrics you use to gauge its success. As the potential exists for floods and floods of referral for uh, candidates, some of whom may be perhaps very underqualified, you really want to measure whether or not your employees are using this new program as you had hoped with a thoughtful approach to the needs of the organization. So I wanted to kind of take you through some metrics you may wish to consider, and those include, you know, are you delivering the goals of the program? Um, remember in the beginning in the, the strategy, we talked about, you know, here's what we want to accomplish. So keep that front of mind as you look to deliver, because your, your management team can remember that. Talk about what social sources um, are the majority of your employees using for referrals. You know, which seem most likely to produce good candidates and good hires? Because if you find that one particular source is working better than another, there may be a case to be made for investing more time there. Think about how does the number of referrals differ by location, by team, or even by individual. We're going to talk a little bit later about technology and how this information may be interesting, but I think it's always cool to see how some teams really get into the game and some people don't. So it's nice to look at that and measure, you know, what can you do to make sure that you can spread that excitement across all different areas. Also think about for which types of positions are you getting the most referral and why is that? Why aren't you getting referrals in, you know, finance or IT or whatever the case may be? Um, perhaps you should think about how you can engage those types of employees differently or figure out where those employee referrals are coming from and how you can tap those sources more. Um, think about your average cost per hire for a referred candidate compared to agencies and traditional postings and so forth. What are you seeing there? How about the bonus amounts? Um, what bonus amount is really required to capture the attention of your employees and engage them in active referring? So if you're offering, you know, 25 bucks or a, you know, a, a Target gift card or whatever, perhaps it's not exciting enough. So think about and evaluate those bonuses and make sure that they make employees excited. And then think about, too, to that end, does the interest in cash awards as opposed to non-monetary rewards differ by age or location in your employee base? That's a very interesting one to think about. It's, it's tough to, to gauge what people of all different demographics are looking for. Um, think about the quality of your referred hires. Um, are you measuring their productivity, you know, six months out, 12 months out in general to see if these, you know, employees that are being coming through employee referral programs are more productive quicker? And then, of course, very importantly, what is the retention rate of referred hires compared to those from other sources? If you remember early back in the uh, presentation, Robin talked a little bit about that, and we know that the, the research shows that it's definitely higher, but I think it's an important thing to you know, show back to your organization as you know, a key win or a measurement of success. So you know, answering these questions um, as you go through your initial few months of the program will help you take steps to continuously improve your employee referral program. Um, you may need to consider better communications or more detailed job descriptions or a number of other things, as well to measure success rates for different sources of hires and employee referrals overall. But 
if you find that you're not measuring success in the way you'd hope for, what do you do? Could you go to the next slide, please? Okay. So here's some outcomes and actions. You know, having a backup plan or a 2.0 strategy is probably a pretty good practice. Remember in the beginning all of the questions that we had you ask yourself in that audit stage um, of planning? Be prepared to address program success or lack thereof and appreciate that you may have to rethink your strategy. Um, I was with a company for a long time and we went through this and I can, I can tell you with the relaunch of the program when you attack all of those different areas that are maybe a little soft, you'd be amazed at how much better your second version could be. So keep that in mind and don't beat yourself up for it either. But if you do find yourself falling a bit short on expectations, there's definitely some quick, quick fixes out there for you. Um, so think about utilization. If the program is underutilized, you may need to jazz up your communication plan. Uh, we've seen a lot of companies do everything from putting table tents in the lunchroom saying, hey, refer a friend, or spotlights, like hot job spotlight on a corporate intranet site. Um, I've even seen recruiters wearing t-shirts with QR codes. Do anything it takes. Just do it. Don't just say, oops, no one's using it. Oh, well. Go make, it, make them know about it. Make them try to use it. Um, if you work in an organization rich with corporate iconography, perhaps find a mascot or develop a tagline or a slogan to drive awareness, something quick and catchy um, in a spoon feed way that people remember, that will help people think, oh yeah, employee referrals, doesn't matter. Um, have your executive team speak about the value of referral programs at a company meeting or a town hall. It's a great way to showcase the program's importance. Anytime a message is rolled down from the top, people hear it and they want to get in on that. Um, if there's a certain team or, or certain location doing really, really well with referrals, talk about it publicly. Let all employees know that, hey, there's a success story out there. Make them want to have their own. Make them, you know, maybe it turns into a little bit of friendly competition. Who knows? But it's okay. Celebrate those wins whenever you can. If you're recognizing a decreased cost for hire, this is my favorite, um, tell your leaders and demonstrate the ways that the savings could benefit another possibly unfunded need. If you recall, I talked about that source. If you found a really good source that your employer referrals are coming from and you've invested there, well, any type of savings that come can help you get funding, hopefully, for something else that you need. So don't be afraid to ask. And at the end of the day, at least you're demonstrating that you're saving money. That's always a good thing. Give employees to what they want. If your award levels are not incentive enough, just ask them what's going to make them happy. Chances are you could offer something of value without added expense, like Robin mentioned, premier parking, maybe it's a half day off, pizza party, whatever the case may be. But just make sure that whatever you're offering gets employees excited, gets them wanting to you know, refer more qualified employees. But I know that nobody really likes talking about metrics and reporting, so I think it's a good time to transition into technology and social media and employee referral programs. So um, please go forward and slide. And if you wouldn't, there you go, thanks. So, okay, so selecting a system and finding the one that is most appropriate for your organization. This is critical. Whether you have a really good system in place today or need a new solution, or a new workflow, technology plays a really big role in employee referral program administration. Organizations often find that simple program administration is a huge burden and they can't manage with any consistency due to volume. You've heard us say the black hole a few times. This is why employee referral programs fail. No one wants to refer someone and then get nothing in return. Even just acknowledgement goes a long way. So there's a lot of different types of solutions available today to assist in employee referral program administration. Some of these are standalone applications, and while others are embedded within an applicant tracking system, or ATS. Prior to selecting a system that is right for you, just consider how referral process is supported, and really referral management, if you will. So what we like to see, in general, is re employee referral solutions support comes in a lot of different ways from technology, most particularly enabling employees to submit a resume as either a general for referral or for a specific job. This is up to you. Um, your organization can determine whether or not you want to make sure that every referral comes, comes through is for a definite posted position, or if someone's just referring someone generally, saying, hey, I think my friend Robin will be great for the company. Please consider her. Um, either way, it works both ways. And those, those organizations that have a talent community, obviously we'll see more of those general referrals. Um, sending email notifications automatically to the employee making a referral 
as well as to the candidate. This is really important. Acknowledging that something has happened is important to everybody. This just gives everyone a little bit of skin in the game. Hey, great, my, I submit, I press that button, I'm the employee, I press the button, my referral was received, and I know that they've got it. And my referral knows they've been referred. That's good stuff. It's just communication, touch point. As many as you can give, it helps. Um, enabling employees to review a list of candidates whom they've referred and to check application status is huge. And it would be really nice to have that. Um, in some standalone cloud solutions, the referring employee is able to quickly view the progress of his or for her referred candidate. This option provides a, a nice feel good, really, for employees as they can understand the stages of the recruitment process. It also eliminates, again, the dreaded black hole. Um, of course, tracking applicants by referral source is huge. Um, it's nice if you have a system that allows um, a user-defined field to say, hey, I'm an employee referral by Robin Erickson or whomever. It's really good to have that. Um, it's very important to know where your employees, which employers are doing the referring. And then obviously enabling um, employees to forward open positions to coworkers for their consideration in applying for a role. That's really, really good. So all of these things are critically important when selecting a system that works for your organization. But most importantly is just, again, when we said this throughout the presentation, is keep it simple. Make it easy for employees to refer candidates. Make your systems um, easy to understand. Many systems are, are, are no more than a one-click step for referring employee. And as we've said, if the process is difficult, you know, people are going to be deterred from, from participation. And what's even worse is if your technology is not user-friendly and no one is you know, understanding how to get a referral into the system, they could do the worst thing, in my opinion, as a former recruiter, you know, and drop off a dreaded paper resume. They're hard to, to track those. So let's make sure that you can you know, use technology to the best, best of its ability. But with that, let's move to a polling question and get a quick pulse from you on technology. I can do that. So Robin, you have an opinion here? So the question is, does your current talent acquisition technology solution support employee referrals? Um, actually, I, I suspect that most organizations' ATSs support employee referrals, but uh, we shall see when the poll results come in, if I'm right. Um, but you know, yeah, we can close regardless of, yeah, I mean, regardless of whatever technology you have, I mean, there are options as you plan for the future. and. Uh, so yeah, so they're looking at the polling results. 50% do, 42% don't. Okay, I'm surprised by the fact that 42% don't. Um, so you know, there are other ways though that you can uh, leverage technology. So Denise, why don't you uh, explain some more of those? Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. So technology for management. Um, quick time check too. We're going to speed it up, but employer referral programs, um, technology. Um, can obviously help you impact program management. And we've heard so, many, heard so many times that companies get inundated with referrals and can't manage them, they can't process them, et cetera. So just remember, with, with all new technology and like with anything else new, test. Test be before you launch. Don't assume that it's going to be as easy for employees as it is for you on the implementation team, because it probably isn't going to be. But also remember, because employees and recruiters are also getting used to a new process. It's going to be a huge learning curve. Allow that grace period. Um, be flexible. Be OK with having people have a lot of questions. But most importantly, train your recruiters to train employees to how to use the system. Um, but the one thing that we, I have seen personally, and I've heard a lot of stories about it, is reinforce that the technology is there for a reason. The more times and how if people continue to skirt the system, or to go around, you'll never be able to track your success. And you want to be able to show those big big wins starting day one immediately. So a, you know, a great tip is to really document you know, how do you do this. Put together, if you will, here's a tip for you, um, a small job aid or an instruction guide that can be sent out prior to launching any type of new solution that people can put on their desk and, or hang on their wall and say, oh, I know someone. I'm going to refer to my quick little guide. And so make sure that they understand that the technology is there to help them and actually is ben more beneficial because if they're tracked and they're noted in the system as the referring employee, well, maybe they'll get a payment eventually. So it's really important to do that. So, you know, 
there's a lot of other ways to keep it fun and easy, and technology, again, is, is super exciting um, for all of us to, to, to um, utilize. But I'd like you to go to the next slide so we can talk about something super exciting for all of us. And that's gamification for engagement. So gamification um, in human resources is, is a growing trend. It's not new to any of us. But if you think back to the four components of planning that we discussed in the beginning of the part presentation, communication and engagement were key. And I reminded you to leave yourself a lot of time for that. By using gamification in employee referral programs, you can drive the message in a fun way and encourage employees to really get in the game. And most importantly, embrace a very contemporary way of bringing employee referral, referral programs to life. Gamification can help the following. It can help really boost participation. It can help encourage friendly competition. It can help celebrate wins, even the small wins. It can help differentiate awards based on teams, wins, locations, or whatever you really choose. And it can help get your leaders involved through targeted communications. So I really jumped through this quickly because we're, we're running low on time, but this is such a fun way to bring employer referral programs to life. And people really like to compete and have fun and have gameplay. So consider this when you're thinking about rolling out your program and when you're considering different solution providers that can help support employer referral program administration. Um, some of these include, obviously, our great sponsor, Rollpoint, as well as Jobbyte, Querify, Zhao, Halogen, and iSIM. So there's a lot of different um, providers out there. It's really finding the one that fits your needs and um, satisfies all of the different elements of your program. So with that, we want to jump quickly into social media. Thank you. So as many of today's employees live on social media, it has become a leading way for employees to encourage um, and recommend their organization to others. Um, using existing, cor existing corporate social media. So this is not recruitment social media or talent acquisition. This is your corporate company social media. Um, you can sometimes complement that with your own social tools. And companies can support very easy and automatic ways of making referrals. Um, in addition, you know, many companies support applications that allow job seekers to locate any connections from their social networks that live within the organization, and they can then submit a resume and a request um, to be contacted. So it allows referrals to take place whether or not an employee identifies a potential candidate first, or the potential candidate spots an open position and then contacts the employee to express interest. So while this type of open referring is a good way to encourage participation, we do recommend having a clear policy in place for social referrals. This is the most rapidly growing area for referring candidates, and you should expect to see a spike in your sourcing from social media referrals. I mean, ultimately, you want social media to be a good way to promote a strong brand message, can say your organization as a great place to work and a destination employer. When developing your strategy for employer referral programs, consider how you can embed the use of social media across all components of your planning process, not just in the job advertisement, if you will. So with that, I would love to turn it over to Rob, and it's going to take you through some of our key takeaways and conclusions. Thanks, Denise. And since we are running a little bit short on time, um, I'm not going to, if you could go to the next slide, please. I'm not going to read through these, but we certainly hope that you took away some valuable insights and leading practices from today's presentation. Uh, we recognize that launching a new program takes a significant amount of planning, communication, and measurement. But we also know that there are a number of solution providers that you can consider for help with your employee referral programs. Um, in terms of just some final key takeaways, you know, that we've talked about the importance of planning and a strategy before you start, anticipating your employee questions, communicating clear expectations for both employees and the candidates they're referring. Um, you want to track your successes immediately. You don't want to give up if you need to rethink your uh, initial strategy. And uh, the more excitement and the better the incentives that you can provide, uh, the more fun your employees will have and the more engaged they, that they will get. So um, with that, um, why don't we go ahead and spend the last five minutes or so uh, looking at some questions that um, may be coming in from the audience. We have some great questions that we will start uh, with. Um, here's John. He says, how do you re reconcile employee referring those that are similar to themselves and having a diverse workforce? Uh, Robin, do you want to take that? Sure. So um, 
definitely want to, <laughs> it's a great question, by the way, John, um, because both of those things are important, right? I mean, you want employee, you, you know, corporate, corporate culture is definitely part of an employment brand. And, you know, if you have employees who are high performers and successful within your organization, they're going to refer people who are like them or who they like, uh, which, you know, sometimes those are different, but sometimes they're the same. Uh, and yet at the same time, you also want to make sure that you have uh, large enough diversity populations. Uh, I think you can be really proactive around, you know, what are you doing and in terms of your uh, diversity um, and inclusion hiring? You know, are you targeting communities? Um, are you focusing some of your recruiting efforts in those areas where um, you may not be having as many employee referrals coming in? And I think it's, it's balancing sort of the, the employees that are coming in through your employee referral program and, you know, also investing other resources in um, other more uh, diversity-oriented programs. Denise, do you have anything else that you want to add to that, or would you agree? Yeah, no, I totally agree. That was that was fabulous, and you know, it is it's, a, it's definitely it's a great question. So, all right, we have a question here, both from Ted and Kathy. They pretty much ask the same thing. Any tips for a small company? We're talking five to thirty people. Is there any differences uh, compared to a mid-sized or large company when it comes to what you have advised? Uh, Denise, do you want to take that? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank. That's a great question as well. You know, I think uh, big company, small company. I think that the key tenets of developing a good program resonate across. I think when with a smaller company, to be honest with you, you're a little bit of an advantage because you can really get personal. You know, you likely know everyone in the organization, so you can develop very targeted communications. Everybody can get in the game and spinning the message the same way. That's that's great if the HR, the talent department, can roll out. You know, here are those key um, message points that we want to share, and here's how we want to engage with our networks. And you can definitely encourage everyone to be connected with each other. So you're creating, you know, that that funnel of just constant referrers. And you know, obviously, jobs are often sent out 11 times through a network. So think about even with a small organization, the reach is pretty deep. So I don't think that there's a disadvantage to being with a small organization. And I think the more you encourage employer referrals, maybe the organization grows. And it will definitely foster a strong you know, value proposition for a, someone to come into a small organization if they see a consistent message and approach from the employee population. I'm not, I hope that answers the question. But I think it's great to work with a small organization. They can do so many really unique and fun and, and targeted um, things for potential applicants. Great. April has a question about transparency. When communicating with the referred candidate that they are not qualified, should you also let the referee know that the person will not move on? Um, this is Robin. I definitely think that you need to um, inform both the referred uh, candidate and the person, the employee who's done the referral. Um, if you don't, the employee might be wondering uh, why, you know, or what's happening. It, it also provides a, a way that if the if the person who's being referred isn't accepted, um, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's awkward for them to reach back out to the person who referred them and said, hey, yeah, I wasn't accepted. So it's probably better in advance if the employee knows that their candidate was, um, you know, isn't being considered and they can reach out to the candidate themselves. Very good. And let's take one more before we end our session here from Thomas. Is there any research that shows that cash incentives are more productive or is this just a knee-jerk reaction from us all? <laughs> <laughs> Robin, I'm hit, yeah, I mean, the, I don't have any the research that. Go ahead. No, yeah. Well, there's there's really no norm is what we're trying to say. I mean, I think people like cash nowadays, but the, the research shows there's really no norm. I mean, depending on the organization, the demographic, the industry, there's always different ways. So it may have been a bit knee jerk, but you know, I think it's it's a it's a gut reaction too for a lot of people to think, hey, I referred to someone, I, I give me the money. <laughs> so, well, especially okay. given the fact that. It, employee referrals are actually much more cost effective than any of the other sources of hire. Um, so even if you're giving um, an employee an award, you know, five of, of five thousand um, dollars, you know, it's that's a much that's a much lower cost per hire than using an agency, for example, or 
using some of the other forms. So uh, it, it's pretty cost effective to, to actually offer in, cash incentives as well as, you know, balancing that with some non-cash incentives as well. Great. I would like to thank uh, Denise and Robin for their excellent uh, presentation today. I also want to let you know that there are a few more questions that haven't been answered. And I am going to be so bold to say that Robin and Denise will uh, answer those over email. I'll share every question that hasn't been answered with them and we'll get, try to get an answer to you. With that, we want to thank everyone for dialing in today, spending time with us. We want to thank Rollpoint for being our sponsor. And we hope to see you back on March 4th when we will talk about uh, social media again. And then uh, I would like to say thank you for dialing in to Recruiting Blogs webinar today. With that, we say goodbye. <laughs>